My guest live in the studio this morning until two is uh, John Mangos. Not only is he a well-respected journalist, TV, a radio man, but uh, but but a role that you've taken on now yes. that you could have only taken on, I guess, because you're 50 and up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to admit that I'm 57. I don't have a problem admitting, admitting my age. Now, 50 up club. Yep. Um, tell me why you got involved. One, because I am 50. Over 50. Mm -hmm. And two, because we are a much neglected and very powerful demographic, as you know. It seems... It seems to me, and those who put the 50 Up Club together, including 2GB, who have been magnificent supporters, that that there's this perception that that, that the... the demographic with spending power is aged between 18 and 35. And mm. sure, they've got disposable income, but they spend it at discos <laughs> and, and on cocktails and dating boys and girls. Seriously, people who are over 50, we're the, we're the real spending power. Mm. And I'm not going to bore you with a whole lot of statistics um, because I have got a whole lot of statistics. But when you think about it, we're the ones that pay the highest health insurance. Mm -hmm. We're the ones who tend to pay on time. We're Mm -hmm. the ones who tend to have less motor accidents yet get slugged higher fees for our motor insurance. We're the ones who tend to be more responsible when it comes to payment and making payments Mm -hmm. on times. We're the ones that put our children through school. We're the ones who insure the homes. And now the kids are staying at home longer. We're the ones who are paying more for groceries for the kids that are staying home. So, you know, we are a very powerful spending demographic and yet we seem to get hit the hardest. Mm. And so it occurred to me uh, that I wanted to take on this chairmanship to just demonstrate to those who are who falsely believe that the disposable dollar is with the younger ones mm. is not necessarily true. And in doing so, by getting some numbers together, and we're just about, in fact, maybe even tonight we've we've reached our 80,000 members. Oh, how fantastic. Because uh, we I was going to say, I want to do a drive to get you 100,000 members. Yeah, well, we're working on that. And we're only in New South Wales and have just launched in Queensland. We're yet to hit Melbourne and the other states. So we're going tremendously mm. well. And we've had a couple of surveys uh, already, and uh, we've blitzed it, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand, just like that. Uh, in fact, our most recent survey, we were a uh, petition, we were aiming for ten. We got that in forty-eight hours, and then had to lift our target to fifteen. And that was the private health insurance mm. uh, petition, which I'm going to present to the health minister after he's finished with his uh, budget duties. He's been pretty busy, Peter sure. Dutton. Yeah. But um, you know, so- when you got fifteen thousand signatures, it's pretty hard to ignore. Um, Susie. The fact of the matter is, I don't know what health company you're with, but you wouldn't have known it, but they probably, the average national average increase is 6.2%. Yours probably went up 7 or 8 or 9%. I know mine went up 9.3%. Now, people don't know this. They just get the extra bill. What we're asking for, we're not trying to sell health insurance, Mm. but what we want the Susie Elements and your listeners to know is which company is jacking up their prices Mm. by how much Mm. so that if I'm with a company that jacked it up by 12, I can go, well, hang on, I'm going to leave you and go to the one that only jacked it up by six. Mm. We just want transparency so that our, our people who are older than 50, they deserve better. That's our slogan. We deserve better. So 50 Up Club is an ad- advocacy group. Absolutely correct. And your your main focus at the moment is insurance and getting better deals. And electricity. That. Oh, and good electricity yep. as well. Um, yeah. The big one, the big ticket items are uh, home and contents insurance, electricity, life insurance, obviously health insurance, uh, essential household expenditure, and car insurance. They're mm-hmm. the big ticket items mm-hmm. at the moment, and we're very. Shortly, and this is a little bit of a scoop for you and your show, mm-hmm. about to concentrate on the female demographic specifically and uh, looking for a, uh, should I say this on air? Yes, I will. A figurehead, mm. someone not unlike yourself. Oh, right. To lead, to do really what I'm doing, but mm. aim specifically at females. And Because uh, we really do feel that we've got the raw end of the deal. I know. You have got the raw end of the I deal. I know 50 up is, is for everybody over 50. Correct. But women, especially in my age bracket of 50 up, we've never earned the sort of money that you guys have earned over the years. Traditionally. It's getting better. It's getting better. Well, it's getting better, but it's still sitting at about 13, 15% plus less than what men. And you sure are good spenders, you girls. (laughs) Well, exactly. We've kept the economy going. But what happens is that our expenses aren't any less than yours. Correct. Yet our... Spending our ability Correct. to have the money to spend. Absolutely right. So this would be ideal. Yeah, yeah. So we've got plans for down the track. We've mm. got 
tremendous plans, and I can't you know reveal no, no, too no, much of now. Course not. We'll roll things out as we go. Yep. Um, our last survey, for example, attracted 6,300 uh, Australians who who we surveyed about the idea of working to, till age 70. Oh, now I'm glad you've brought that up because I saw you on the morning show this week or Correct. the week just gone. Correct. Um, and you quoted some rather alarming survey results. I, I've got them here in front oh, of me. Oh, beaut. Right? Because now, one, one in three yeah. Australians, one third of Australians actually do want to work until they're 70. Mm. All right? Now, one in ten believe that they will be able to find satisfactory work. Okay, fair enough. Seven in ten don't believe physically appropriate work would be available. Yeah. But of that seven in ten, I reckon a lot of them would still love to be able to work to 70 if they knew that they could be retrained or re-educated. And that's something that we've got to change in the Australian psyche. Uh, when yep. we think training and education, and I know your listeners are going to agree with me on this one. Well, give us we, a ring, 131873. You know, there you go, 131873. Do call and give us your opinion because we believe there's a psyche in Australia which we've got to change, which is training and education seems to be a mindset of five-year-olds to 25-year-olds. Mm. No, it should be five to 55. Mm. If someone's had a manual job for the first 50 years of their lives, there's no reason why they can't be re-educated, retrained, and spend a very productive next 20 years of their lives doing something that's not mm. as physically strenuous. Mm. And that's the biggest concern of the 7 in 10 who don't think they can work till 70. Yes. It's the physicality of it. The work doesn't have to be physical. There are a lot of people listening to us now who are perfectly capable of operating computers mm. and, and contributing to society and, more importantly, not being a burden on the taxpayer. But, John, this is something that needs to be put into a plan, put in place and introduced as we move through the decades. This is not something that you can solve overnight. No, it isn't. And when you've got government after government, both sides, mm. admitting that we're an ageing population, admi admitting that we're overspending uh, and admitting that we can't carry the burden of the ageing uh, population mm. with taxpayer-funded pensions, they've got to roll out some schemes for, for the, those of us who want to work mm. longer. Mm. Otherwise, it's just not going to happen. Oh, for sure. Now, fortunately enough, this working till you're 70 isn't going to come in probably until 2035. Correct. So that the current uh, group of people who are going to be mature working-wise, that's not going to be applicable. But that's regardless because whether it happens in five years or 20 years or 50 years' time, we still have to put all of the, the checks and balances in place, as you say, so that we can have older workers working with new workers so that it does become this wonderful synergy. That's exactly right, Susie. In 10 years from now, I'm going to be 67. Mm. I have, I've been in the media for 40 years. Mm. I've no idea what I'll be doing in 10 years' time, but I know I want to be doing something. Mm. I want a reason to get out of bed. You know what I mean? Yes. And how many of us have seen our friends and relatives who do retire decline in health rapidly the moment mm. they stop doing mm. things? Or people who may, maybe want to go and, and assist charity, but they don't necessarily have the money to be able to give up paid work in order to do something that, on a voluntary That's exactly basis. right. And there's another, there's another thing that concerns me that's come to our attention, and that's what we're calling the double dip. And that is people who will go, oh, okay, I know what I'll do. I'll retire at, say, let's say, 60. Mm. I'll amortise what superannuation I've got until the new superannuation age, say, 67. Yeah. So I'll, I'll use that money between 60 and 67 and then just click over onto the pension. Uh, well, that's the worst of both worlds, isn't yes. it? Yes. And that's a double dip. Yes. We don't want that. And and that's what made Paul Keating's comments quite pertinent yesterday. He, who insisted on super being compulsory up until mm. the age of 80, he's now saying we should have super mark two that goes from 80 to 100 because, because Australians living are so living longer. What advantage is it for somebody to sign up for 50 Up Club? Because it's free to join, isn't it? Yes, it is. As I say, all we want is your email address and you put your own and there's no obligations. Uh, the advantages are you will you will be sent directly to your computer or device the latest offers. For example, we have got an electricity offer on at the moment mm. that that can save anybody seventeen percent off their current bill, no strings attached, no obligation. Wow! So you put in what you're currently paying, and uh, and you, you switch across to I think the company is called Click Energy, mm -hmm. and if you're a member of Fifty Up, you automatically get seventeen percent off. Now. Mm. 
if you've got a bill of around $1,500 a quarter, which I do, in a four-bedroom mm. home, two kids and mm-hmm. lights on and a swimming pool, um, <laughs> that's $500 a quarter, $2,000 a year. I, I'm in the process of making that switch right now. Yes, yes. Oh, well, I mean, that's, that's really serious stuff. We know we buy one-off things. You know, you might buy, an, you might buy a shirt. You got it on sale, well and good. It's a one-off purchase, but electricity—it's like taxes. Perennial. It just never stops. Health insurance, perennial. Car insurance, yeah. perennial. And 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 it's not. It's in a lot of cases, it's closer to a thousand dollars than five hundred, or yep. or more. Yeah, that's the so, that's the scary part, so isn't it? What you've got to remember, Susan, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Is that these savings of a few hundred dollars. Mm over a period of years add up to thousands of dollars yeah. and and that's what we're trying to alert our members to so do do it folks get on to 50 up uh, club.com cost you nothing and all we're doing is making you aware of better deals it's up to you whether you switch or not but you'll find that you'll save a lot of money mm. I know that's that's fantastic and even if you don't want to switch yourself even if you want to use that information and use it against your existing and, and, and you know what there are there are teams mm. in certain insurance companies that have what are known as the retention team you tell them about a better deal somewhere else and they'll and they'll match it so it's, we're giving you bad Bargaining power, folks. And the more numbers we have, the more bargaining power you have.